This is a preview of next week's lesson on spirituality. Question number one, what is spirituality? Well, as we find it, it is that part of human being that searches for meaning. That asks questions like, what is the meaning of life? Specifically, what is the meaning of my life? When I am dead, what will the meaning of my life be? Spirituality often has much to do with religion and with God. The reason why, of course, is because in the search for meaning, human beings usually ask ultimate questions. Questions like, where did I come from? Where am I going? What happens when I die? So spirituality usually seeks God because by definition, God is the one that transcends time. And so that's where the answers to these ultimate questions are to be found. If people don't ask ultimate questions, for example, if they accept the fact that their life, their being began with birth and it ends at death and there's nothing beyond one side or the other, then they still see questions of meaning, spiritual questions, but perhaps without reference to the divine. But usually spirituality is God seeking. Jesus reflected this idea when he made this amazing statement. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? He recognized that it's possible for human beings to be successful in every way and yet still miss out on the ultimate meaning of life and thereby lose everything truly important. Where does spirituality come from? Well, I'm going to postulate that it's an innate part of every normal human being. Now, obviously, there are some abnormal human beings who don't have mental capacity, who are living vegetables or something like that, but normal human beings have a spiritual peace inside them. Is this built in by the designer, or is it an evolutionary adaptation? Well, I think it's built in by the designer, and one of the reasons I do is because there's no way to explain it as an evolutionary adaptation. I mean, evolution by its very nature postulates that what the organism develops and was retained through the process of natural selection is that which is useful to the organism. So why would something that wasn't real, that is a godsend, a quest for meaning, be of any real purpose to an organism? And in fact, it would be an absolute liability. It would cause anxiety and depression, as it does in so many people. And it would handicap the organism in living life effectively. But at any rate, um, there seems to be something inside of every human being that asks these questions about meaning. Meaning, value, purpose. And I think it's built in. I, you could compare it, for example, to other kinds of built-in human functions, like sexuality. Obviously, sexuality has a reproductive function, and so from a evolutionary point of view, it certainly is necessary to pass on genetic material from one generation to the next. But every human being who's ever experienced sexuality knows that sexuality has another side to it as well, a side of tenderness and intimacy and relationship and romance and love. And just what are the functions of those things? Well, they seem to promote connection. They provide human beings with a way of becoming intimate with at least one other human being in a way that that person opens himself or herself entirely to the other person in a trusting, intimate relationship. And this seems to be something that is characteristic of every human being. Herbert Benson, the Harvard University cardiologist, who wrote the book, The Relaxation Response and Beyond the Relaxation Response, when he was trying to find a way of <clears throat> reducing the stress response in his cardiac patients and promoting the idea of a relaxation process that would use the relaxation response, says that he noticed that those patients who were faithfully practicing the relaxation response became interested in spiritual things. They became spiritual people. He couldn't figure out why. Well, I think the reason why is because this is an innate human response, one that doesn't get a lot of attention in our very busy, noisy society. But when we become quiet and we start listening, then we hear something. And that something leads us ultimately to our spiritual side and ultimately to God. Why spirituality? Well, life is difficult. This difficulty produces suffering. Suffering produces a challenge to our sense of meaning. And loss of meaning makes life unbearable. As Viktor Frankl said in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, man can endure almost any how as long as he has a why. Human beings can go through tremendous suffering. They can rise above all kinds of calamities and misfortunes if they have a sense of meaning. 
and its spirituality that discovers meaning in life. Illness and spirituality are intimately related. And the reason why, of course, is because illness produces suffering, either directly in the form of pain, malaise, just plain feeling bad, perhaps terrible, chronic, long-term pain, or death or the threat of death, the possibility that I'm going to lose my life. And this produces a loss of meaning. Ill people always ask questions about why. Why me? Why now? What did I do wrong? Why my family? Why my kid? Why my wife? And if there is no way of finding meaning in an illness, then the illness itself becomes far worse than it ever was. It is exacerbated by the very loss of meaning. Overlaid on the illness with its physical suffering are emotional and mental and social levels of suffering. Spirituality, on the other hand, promotes healing by bringing meaning into illness. And it does this, of course, on several levels, personal levels, social levels, eternal levels. Spirituality has to do with wholeness and brokenness. It uh, uh, starts with the premise that human beings are created to be whole, living in a whole world as a part of a whole universe. That brokenness came into this universe and that this brokenness has profoundly and adversely affected every human being but that spirituality is a force for wholeness. It's a force for integration in the face of disintegration. Spirituality is a way of connecting back, connecting to people, connecting to our own sense of self, connecting ultimately to God in the face of the huge disconnection that is a part of the suffering that goes on in our world. How can you grow spiritually? I mean, if spirituality is a good thing, how do you go about cultivating it? Well, one thing that you have to do is you have to challenge it. Most people who've been through difficult times will acknowledge that those difficult times were the times when they grew the most spiritually. Spirituality is like a muscle. If you don't challenge it, it gets weak and flabby. You have to do this intentionally. You don't just drift into spirituality any more than you drift into physical fitness or drift into being able to run a marathon or drift into being a champion weightlifter. It has to take intentionality and discipline, regular practice, regular training. And it requires patience because spiritual growth is an organic process. It's like physical fitness. It doesn't happen in a day or a week. It takes months and months to become physically adapted to the challenge. And the same thing is true of spirituality. But people who have done it will testify that it's well worth it. And all through the ages there have been great practitioners of spirituality who have accomplished amazing things and who have kept their stability in very, very difficult times, including serious illness and stress.